Drawing back in your life. So today we want to keep this pretty short and uh, really synthesize some information that we've talked about and gone over in the past and reflect on how uh, we've been talking about the course in terms of uh, our two pillars, information from the visual field and how we're translating that versus how we are translating information from imagination. You know, I don't want it to be lost on us that there's still a much larger, you know, and, and maybe a more general kind of conversation just about creativity itself. In amongst this group of still life objects, which we'll talk about in a minute, uh, there's a book by Robert and Michelle Root Bernstein called Sparks of Genius, The 13 Thinking Tools of the World's Most Creative People. Let's see if I can remember them. Observing, imaging, abstracting, recognizing patterns, forming patterns, analogizing, body thinking, empathizing, dimensional thinking, modeling, play, synthesizing, and transformation. Now, why do we throw that big list out there? One of the key kinds of takeaways is this notion of being responsive to your own making. Another way to talk about this is to think about a process-oriented approach to creativity, right? Now, this list of 13, you know, is broad and can be a little bit overwhelming unless you just take one of them. If I just take transforming and I just do that, right, write transforming right on your paper, then it can move that creative process forward, get us to think and see in slightly different ways. And so it takes us from the box that we're in in the moment and just moves us one step forward. That's what we're talking about. So if we even reflect on perhaps the way that we're using our drawing systems, like for example, point vector, something we've talked a lot about, something that I want you to be using for this week's homework. But if, as I'm making a drawing, I just keep coming back to that point vector and, and then after I've instituted that as a drawing system and I've seen the results that I'm getting, have these two in my reflection and think about, okay, what results have I gotten? What was I trying to do? And now is there one thing that I can do more of? Or if we think about our dominant diagonal, we wanna do studies about do around dominant diagonal and then I just wanna make one change, one change in the still line. Right now, we, our dominant diagonal is this Baroque angle, but if I was to make that into a, a gamut, then I might move just one thing. To get on the dominant diagonal. Okay, so let's talk about these still life objects. You can see that I've, uh, I've got still life objects that have been reduced down to just um, monochromatic, uh, mono value forms. This is going to make it easier for us to just consider the drawing systems um, that we're using to build the drawings. So I encourage you go find those wherever they can be found, right? I am a big believer in uh, using things that are free like um, uh, grabbing things out of the recycling and then spray painting them into just a monochromatic single value so that then I can just think about just the drawing systems and not have to worry about the label and the detail information that the object may have. Right now there's some other forms here that are already monochromatic. These are also good. But if we go back to that transforming, as a way of engaging in the creative process, transforming as a way of finding something new, what I'm trying to point out here is take your still life objects and then transform them. So take an object from the recycling and, and paint it into a monochromatic tone. Take, take a still life object, and transform at one time, right? Suddenly we have something new. 